Let's first address what MSQE trains you for. When you study the MSQE course, you are essentially trained a lot of mathematical and statistical skills and tools for doing economics research. Now, the thing over here is when you read econometrics or linear programming or let's say you study statistics or let's say you study optimization, you have a primary objective to understand how do I do the economic research or economic analysis with these tools and are these tools helpful for me or not. Now having said that it does not mean that you have to restrict yourself to economics research because understand this. It, the idea here is that economics is a lot about model building and number crunching. And if you try to understand it, data science is kind of pretty similar and the skills are pretty parallel to each other. So you can transfer your learnings in MSQE as an economic student to a data scientist and rather I would say a data professional. Now I myself had qualified for both CMI's Masters in Data Science program and ISI Kolkata's MSQE. Now I choose ISI Kolkata's MSQE mainly because of few reasons like I also wanted to study a bit of economics and finance. And one of the things about finance is that if you do not understand economics properly, your finance knowledge will be like the people who come to news studios or business channels, business news channels and they keep on talking about things without making a lot of sense, right? So you have to understand economics and not just the macroeconomics but the microeconomics parts as well. Because without a firm understanding of microeconomics, your modeling skills will suffer a lot because only when you study microeconomics properly, you try to understand how can economic modeling help you in a lot of situations which involves transactions and incentives. Now, when you move on from microeconomics to macroeconomics, yes, there are a lot of factors which, which, which is governed by your set of assumptions. And as a, as a data scientist, uh, data scientists are people who are more like throwing a lot of computation power and a lot of algorithms to data and they do not really bother about the assumptions in a lot of cases. Now yes, this could be controversial for a lot of people but it's pretty, pretty accurate that when you are a macroeconomist, your assumptions are like fundamental basis of your any analysis. If I change one of the assumptions of your model or your analysis, your whole analysis will change. And that is something which is not really so much apparent in microeconomics or I would say in physics or in some kind of a pure mathematics domain. So that is where the departure starts happening when you move from micro to macro. But that is also the part where data crunching begins when you move from micro to macro. Because in macro you access GDP data, inflation data and try to make sense of what will happen with these numbers and how will exchange rate affect these numbers and how will trade surplus affect these numbers and a lot of other macroeconomic factors. And if I have to give you a basic idea that what is really a very prevalent theme in your uh, macroeconomics research, it's understanding of time series analysis. Now, when we talk of time series analysis, there are essentially two types of time series. One is your pure univariate time series in which you just have one unit and for that unit, you are observing a particular feature at different points of time and just noting it down. And 
there could be a time series in which you have multiple units and for all those units you are observing a feature and noting it down at all time intervals now this time series becomes a panel data time series and the earlier one was a univariate time series now if you go into the deepest part of econometrics and time series you will have to deal with a lot of panel data right and that is the part which is not really touched by data scientists a lot but it is touched by econometricians and macroeconomists and the univariate time series forecasting or analysis where you calculate the trend seasonality or do the forecasting that's governed by, that's actually governed by a lot of data scientists as well even data scientists know that arima profit lst and these are the things which you do for such problems now comes the thing that the problem here is that a lot of people think that you need a lot of coding expertise in data science now that's that's true to an extent and it depends on the company and on the role and a lot of companies actually require software engineers and as they want to market themselves well they label it as a data scientist role and they hide it beneath a lot of jargons right so you need to be sure that what kind of a role you're getting into it's rather you have to understand whether this is a software engineering role which you're applying to or really a data scientist role which you're applying to now not all companies will be very honest and upfront but all good companies are pretty much upfront what they require from you what they expect from you so uh, this is what i wanted to discuss in this video to begin with and uh, i'm not sure if uh, you guys are able to uh, get my message or uh, if you have some kind of a doubts about the topic which i am talking about today you can type in your comments i can take your comments as well or rather i can take your questions as well because i am pretty much done with my initial uh, discourse rather i should not say discourse but initial point of view that whatever you study in msqe and that is your quantitative economics course a lot of things are related to number crunching data analysis math stat skills and all is for economics research and you can very well use it to become a data scientist and as i have already told that i always wanted to become a data scientist but i had keen interest in in the markets and finance so that is why i chose uh, the msq program right so i'm waiting for your uh, doubts queries comments about anything i mean you can ask me about something which is not related to data science or msq anything in general because i have a uh, good amount of time left now it's 6:53 so i can wait till 7 o'clock if you have any doubts and if i don't see any uh, doubts coming my way or any questions coming my way i can even log off by 655 yeah hi parth so if you have any questions parth start asking or uh, i will wait till 655 and then log off and if i keep on getting questions then till 7 and if i keep on getting more good questions then i can continue it further as well because the point which i had to tell i have already uh, communicated and uh, the problem the reason i did not post a proper video is i did not want to edit i just wanted to make a video because uh, i am not feeling in that mood of making a video editing it out and publishing it so that's the idea Manoj Chandradhar is asking, "What's the total marks of IASI exam and MSQ cutoff? I mean, these are things which you, you can easily get it on from the internet. Should I choose MSQ or MA Economics? What? I mean, MSQ is MA Economics. It's just the name is different, and essentially they have the same thing. They are the same thing. It depends on the college which is offering that course." DSC will offer you MA Economics, IGIDR might offer you MSc Economics, I ISI will offer you MSQ. All are the same. They are giving you Economics Masters, so there is not much difference there. 
so yeah till you ask any question let me just fill you in with something a uh, few days back uh, i was uh, actually talking to a lot of people um, and trying to understand what are their career queries because a lot of people do mail me about their career issues that uh, they are interested in this subject how can they pursue it or what should they, what uh, should they do now should they do masters should they take up a job or things like those so uh, the thing over here is that i generally entertain such queries and such concerns if i find some kind of a sincerity but if i don't feel that sincerity if i feel that someone is looking for an upper affirmative message that they have already done something and i just need to confirm that whatever you're doing is right so i, I don't want to do that i don't want to be the person who just affirms your decisions if you are stuck somewhere and you have a sincere query i will help you in asking proper questions to yourself right and i believe that if you ask proper questions to yourself you will get the answer automatically and even if you do not get the answer you must know how to ask proper questions to yourself and if you are not genuine i generally do not entertain such queries so yeah this is my feedback based on the emails which i keep on receiving that sometimes i do entertain the emails but sometimes i ignore emails because for lack of sincerity now uh parth is asking will you have any more live streams i yeah, i generally have a lot of live streams and i believe that you can check my past live streams in my channel now chakradhar is asking ISI, MSQE, or DSC, or IGIDR, or IIT Delhi, or IIT Roorkee, economics. Which one should be good? The first thing is, you need to first get an admission offer from these institutions, and after you get admission offer, come back with this question again, and then we can choose properly. Without having the admission offer. you are not actually in a proper position to decide which one would be the best right because i believe that this should be clear to people while i was preparing for the iit j exam i used to think that i would get selected to iit delhi or iit bombay but i actually landed up in iit khadakpur and i don't regret it iit khadakpur is a terrific place and after i uh, graduated from khadakpur and spent a lot of time in the <coughs> outside world i wanted to come back to college i got a chance to uh, study in either isi kolkata or cmi and i decided after getting offers from both i never had made up my mind that i will choose this course over this course i first got offers from them i consulted few people i asked myself and then made a choice because ultimately if i have to take, give you a mantra which you can remember all your life <clears throat> all ends are ape chosen only the means are mans which means that you do not have to worry about your goals if you have decided that this is your goal you have to find a way but the problem here is if you have to think a lot about whether this is the right goal or wrong goal then you are getting lost and you are not working hard for yourself okay so it's 6:59 and as i said that by 7 i would have a rough idea that whether i'm getting questions or not and till now i have no questions uh, which i can uh, which can make me prolong this live stream so okay then <coughs> i guess i will have to end the live stream it was a good short live stream and i hope to entertain your questions in the next live stream soon bye bye